1974, when last the papers told the story of Leeds United winning the title. Their inside pages were filled with President Nixon and the Watergate scandal and Harold Wilson's doings in Downing Street. That was 18 years ago, and for most of those years, Leeds had little to celebrate. Their long decline took them in 1988 to the brink of relegation to the third division. But then, the turnaround. The arrival of Howard Wilkinson, soon dubbed Sergeant Wilco by the fans, was swiftly followed by the recruitment of an almost entirely new army. By 1990, the battle to regain First Division status had been won. How many could have guessed at that point that the ultimate success would come so soon? Leeds surprised many in their first season back in the top flight by finishing fourth in Division One, reaching two semi-finals and pushing champions Arsenal all the way to a third replay before bowing out of the FA Cup. In the close season, the signing of England internationals Steve Hodge and Tony Dorigo and Rodney Wallace for a club record fee proved the determination of Wilkinson to strengthen his squad still further. The willingness of the board to continue to back him and the ambition of the club as a whole to make a serious challenge for honours. The long-awaited first league game of the season at Crystal Palace was postponed because building work at Selhurst Park was incomplete. The big kick-off for Leeds, though, finally arrived against Brian Clough's Nottingham Forest on Tuesday the 20th of August at Ellen Road. John McClellan was at right back because Mel Sterling was not fully fit and had to be content with a place on the bench alongside Steve Hodge, who must have been disappointed not to get a run out against his old club. Both sides had chances that night, but Leeds were the better team and secured all three points with a solitary goal. It's the start Leeds required. Jubilation all around Ellen Road. And Gary McAllister, whose first goal in Leeds Colours was against Forest last season, has broken the deadlock on ten minutes. The long throw got them unsettled. Chapman's flick on the break to McAllister, who rifles it under Crossley. Perfect start, and Lee Chapman again showing his prowess in the air, and McAllister his with the right boot. Lethal. Four days later, the first meeting between United and Sheffield Wednesday since Wilkinson switched to Leeds. The atmosphere for the Yorkshire derby was supercharged, but the Leeds fans were kept quiet until the dying minutes. Lukic with another long kick then, time of the essence for Leeds. Chapman's up there, perhaps a last chance. Strachan heads it back across, no chance there for Chapman. Here's Hodge! Oh, Steve Hodge just scored! What a fairy tale! It looked like Leeds were staring defeat in the face. But Steve Hodge honours a substitute and in with a goal. What a way to start your career for Leeds United. Steve Hodge, so many congratulations. Relief written all over the faces. The ball into the penalty area. Chapman couldn't get there, but Steve Hodge did. Look at that. Possibly a slight deflection, just taking it past Chris Woods. But all credit to Steve Hodge. The right place for the loose ball from about 10 yards. Leeds gave their first indication of being championship material in their first away game at Southampton. Rod Wallace enjoyed his return to the Dell and played an important part in a classy United victory. Sterling going down the right. The substitute looking for an early cross. It's bounced away to Speed. Oh, that's with his right foot. That's a great goal from Gary Speed. Mel Sterling down the right, getting the ball into the middle. Wallace is brought down. Is it a penalty? It is. The referee says penalty. Strachan. Right footed. Oh, it's only just, but it's in. It's 2-0. Strachan again. Putting it wide to the right this time. Still looking for another of those tosses. And again, it appeals for a penalty. Chapman is pushed down. 
Strachan again, and that's number three for Leeds United. Chapman nods it inside again. Speed tries a long one. Oh, what a way to round the match off. Two for Strachan, and what a second goal for Gary Speed. 4-0 for Leeds. Leeds couldn't have gone into the next match in better heart. And they certainly needed to be at their best against the early pacemakers, Manchester United, who hadn't conceded a goal and still had a 100% record, as Leeds travelled to Old Trafford on a blistering hot day at the end of August. Leeds made their first team changes of the season, Sterling in for McClelland at right back, who moved to number five, to replace the injured Chris Fairclough. It's McAllister, Dorico. United have it back with Webb. The man, Gordon Strachan. McAllister. Parker did well, watching that one all the way, but it's more than two leads in Dorigo. Gary Speed. And it's over the top, and it's Chapman! And that's the first time Spiker's been beaten this season in the league. And perhaps even an element of a mistake in it. Well, the division's leading scorer from last year, Lee Chapman, has breached the defence. It was a well-measured cross from Gary Speed. Schmeichel came, but missed the flight of the ball. Chapman, however, did not. In. Yes, says the referee. It's a desperate defending by Leeds. He's got Giggs away here, and Giggs wasn't far away. And Lukic, well, he didn't know much about that one. Off the post from Blackmore. by Giggs through from Robson and it could come to him again it does the fans may have been disappointed that Leeds couldn't hang on to all three points against probably their most bitter rivals they'd certainly been waiting a long time 1981 was the last time Leeds beat the Red Devils United hadn't got the best of records against Arsenal either and although the defending champions had made a poor start by their standards Leeds were given a footballing lesson early on Winterburn Arsenal looking for a way through. Hans Merson might find it. Out wide. And the cross coming in early towards Smith. Oh, that's a great start for Arsenal. Alan Smith takes it well on his left foot. Merson down the left hand side. Again, chances here for Arsenal. The start of this second half. Here's Winterburn. It's come for Smith again. And he's totally wrong footed, John Lukic. It's desperately needing something. Up go the heads again. Wallace is up there. It's away. McAllister heads home, but the whistle's gone. And for a penalty. Well, why didn't the referee let the goal stand? The whistle had already gone. Perhaps for a push or maybe a handball just there, keeping it out. Penalty deletes, though. A chance for Strachan to get his third penalty in three games after scoring twice at Southampton. Strachan, one international against Seaman, another. Needs to score it, and does. Well, what a cheeky penalty, just lofted it over David Seaman almost. Leads are back in it, 2-1. Strachan urging his troops on. And if Seaman had stayed still and not even moved his arms, he'd have headed that one away, I think. Look at it again. Can Leeds get back? Rigo plays it back to Batty. Early cross needed. Up into the far post. Headed towards Chapman at the far post. Lee Chapman has scored his first goal of the season. And Leeds are back on level terms. And Arsenal are denied their first away win of the season. And Leeds protect the unbeaten record again. It's back to two all. What a good movement. David Batty putting in a deep cross.
initially that's what caught them out the header coming back across from McAllister I think it was and Lee Chapman with the striker's instinct poaching just ahead of the goalkeeper a vital goal for Leeds United there indeed it was McAllister and there was Chapman to all David Weatherall made his debut for Leeds as a substitute in that game, but Howard was able to name the same starting eleven again for what looked like a tough game against Manchester City at Ellen Road that had a bit of everything about it. Stratton takes the corner again. Comes on the penalty spot, really. It's out to Dorigo. Half volley. Oh, that's a super goal from Tony Dorigo. His first goal for Leeds United. The sixth match of the season. And Leeds take the lead. Sterling pops one over the top. There's a more one to chase after. Chapman's onto it. Got Steve Redmond on him. Chapman still looking for a way round. Asks Strachan instead. The ball's gone loose to Batty. David Batty! Would you believe it? He's waited over four years for that one. And so have the cop as well. David Batty makes it two. And that's only his second goal ever as well. A short ball in, and well, Batty is hardly ever there, never mind scoring them. Reed again, another long, long ball. And the play has gone down under Chris White's challenge, and I think that a penalty has been given. Indeed it has. Controversial decision then, as now Quinn took a tumble. And can Man City get back into this one? It's up to the player manager. Reed against Lukic. It's off the post. Reed's touched it again. And he's put it in. But the Leeds player's hands go up. John McClellan knew the rules. And I think Peter Reed must have just got sort of a striker's instinct, despite the fact he's wearing number four. Because you can't touch the ball twice. Oh, Leeds must surely be in with a chance here of making it three. The push is on. It's got to be a penalty. It is. Tony Coton comes out to half protest but the youngster David Weatherall there bundled to the ground by Steve Redman well for Gordon Strachan it's three out of three as far as penalties are concerned there's number four and there's goal number four for Gordon Strachan and on the day Leeds United wrap it up 3-0 no way back for Manchester City now they may be the informed team but Strachan kills them Oh, I thought we played uh, very well against Man City. Uh, and I say that because we lost Wallace after 10 minutes and the team had to be jigged around. So I thought we did, we did very well that day. Um, people probably would look at the Southampton performance because of the scoreline. Uh, and I wouldn't argue with that. That was a good performance away from home. Manchester United, the first half, was an excellent performance. But I think if I was pressed, I think if I was pressed, I'd have to go for Man City from the point of view of taking on opponents who were in form at the time and dealing with them, dealing with their strengths. Well, I think uh, Mel Sterling played a good ball down line for... Uh... Chapman and, and Chappie's doing well and he's pulled it back for Strack and Strack's not to first time crossing and knocked it down and put it in the bottom corner. I think the Leeds fans have been looking forward to it more than me. Uh, it's been a long time coming, almost four years. Uh, and I did enjoy it quite a lot, yeah. The bad news was that Rod Wallace picked up a knee injury in that game, which was to keep him out for seven weeks. Carl Shutt won his seasonal debut as a replacement for Wallace in the number eight shirt, down at Stamford Bridge a week later, and things couldn't have worked out better. Stratton's cross is cleared. Still chances for Leeds, though, in possession. Wide to speed, chip. There's Carl Shutt, and Carl Shutt scored now. Another one to get his first of the season. That's his first appearance of the season as well. Go. Leeds trying to double their lead here. The cross coming in, it's bouncing around. Chapman, was it over the line? Chelsea desperate to get back in it. Got men in the middle here. One of them's wise, but the flag is up. That will not count. That victory shunted Leeds up another two places to second in the table, and they weren't to leave the top two again this season. They stayed second despite a below-par performance in a goalless game at Coventry, 
and just a single goal settled the next encounter for what an important strike, giving Leeds their first win over Liverpool since they last won the title 18 years before. It was Hodges' first full game of the season as replacement for Carl Schutt. Leeds pressing again, Strachan, edge of the area, he's danced past one, now real chances, it gets a deflection and it goes just wide, and Gordon Strachan must have thought he was on for goal number five of the season. Look at it from this angle, he skipped past the defender, and oh, you could almost blow it in. Again the skipper with the corner, again to the near post. Grobler did his best, Dorigo's in there, so to Hodge, and Steve Hodge, well this is his first ball game of the season, he scored on his first appearance as a substitute at Sheffield Wednesday, and Steve Hodge has done it again, the first time he started a game, and that's a priceless goal for Leeds United, Grobler not really too effective there, Dorigo charged it down, he then got a ball across, and Hodge making a habit of being where it matters most and Leeds have so few opportunities to celebrate goals against Liverpool I think everyone's going to make the most of this can they hold the lead cleared up down the right again another chance here for Leeds now Chapman's in the middle he's still calling for it but it's laid back Hodge again blocked and clear from Liverpool well, Leeds had chances again to make it 2-0 then. Steve Hodge, the best place. Speed, saw Chapman, but did well to get it back there. All credit to the Liverpool defenders, though. Speed in there again. Well, he's just about got it to McAllister. And Gary McAllister looking square. Strachan again, edge of the area. Has he gone too far? He can still get a cross in. Does do. Grobelar's come for it, and he took that very well indeed. Two men in white shirts coming towards him. McAllister again. Busy afternoon for him. Strachan. The flag stays down. Strachan still. Oh, that's a super save. Where's it going now? Away. And Leeds are denied a second goal. Batty now. Strachan again. He's enjoying this. Rides another challenge. Still Strachan. Still 1-0, remember. Leeds looking to wrap it up with a second that is long ball again Chapman Grobelar's all over the place again McAllister over the bar that could have signed and sealed it Grobelar surviving he's had a good afternoon was caught a little bit there though went to fight Chapman for the ball Chapman got it back but McAllister just couldn't quite keep it down I felt that day we had a difficult game on our hands and we cope with it well. I thought Liverpool, uh, despite the problems, w were, were on song in, in, in terms of effort and, and, and trying to stop us winning the football match. And I thought we did well on the day. Where do you think you particularly won that game? Was it in midfield or the solid defence? No, I think it was just a good all-round performance. Moving on to the Norwich game then, obviously the lads went there on very much a high. Was it a game beforehand you, were, you thought you should win? Not very good conditions at the time. Um, heavy sort of squally rain falling which made life a bit more difficult um, and we just made I thought one or two errors in, in crucial areas and yet at the same time up front I remember our crossing was we got in some great positions and, and just never really delivered the sort of balls that, that we're capable of delivering what about the goals though? Gary Speed, I remember, took one when uh, the defence were a bit flat-footed and appealing for offside. He finished it very well, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, and I suppose the, 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 the game will stand in the memory for Tony Rigo's free kick, which was a, a hell of a goal. Um, but overall, you know, you've got to be happy uh, with a draw away from home. If you're winning your home games, a draw away from home and the occasional victory, We'll see you, you know, well into the fore by, by Easter. It was three days later that United finally came to grief. The 11th game of the season, that rearranged match at Crystal Palace, the only goal from a disputed free kick well into injury time.
The team showed their character and belief in themselves, however, with a superb opening to their game against Sheffield United, although everyone was biting their nails by the end. Sterling winding himself up for another long throw in by the looks of things. There he goes, edge of the six-yard box. Chapman's beaten in the air, but Leeds have taken the lead. And it's Steve Hodge again, edge of the area. You'll find him there so often, it's not true. And Steve Hodge gets another one. Sterling's long throw in, paying dividends, not quite as you'd imagine, but... Oh, didn't he strike it well? Chapman beaten in the air, but the header fell nicely with Steve Hodge. Look how much space he's making for himself as the throw's coming across. All the blades going back. And no one could stop it going in the net. McAllister taking it. Keeper's in trouble again. The post. Has the ball gone out? It's still in play. Carl Shutt shakes his head, but leads piling on the pressure at the start of this match. Again, Phil Kite flapping at it, really, and shot very unlucky there. Just wide up there. Meanwhile, the referee has pulled play back right to the edge of the Sheffield United penalty area. And now we'll see Mel Sterling might like to strike one. And there we see exactly why. The linesman eagle-eyed there as Phil Kite just took a step too many just outside his penalty area and our referee this afternoon Kerem Barrett of Coventry really laying down the law here to the Sheffield United wall up steps Sterling it's deflected but it's gone in and well I think all of us here knew that Mel Sterling was going to try and score then and he did just that it took a deflection but again the wall didn't really do its job properly and Leeds make it to and he found the gap perfectly and I think it might have even hit his own man in the wall Phil Kite was perplexed and Sterling makes it too McAllister with a very ambitious ball but look how inch perfect it is to Gary Speed one side to the other Speed into the penalty area appeals, it's a penalty Ian Bryson a judge to have pushed and we'll get a closer look at that one I think Tony Dorigo going on the end of the ball from Gary Speed and just carried on going really with a little help from Ian Bryson Bryson looks aggrieved here's Sterling though possibly his second it is it's three to Leeds United Kite got closer to that one and that's perhaps why Mel Sterling is so relieved 3-0 to Leeds and we're still in the first half what a great goal scoring record Sterling has for a full back taken quickly from Mike Whitlow it's edge of the area, it's bouncing on it's Hodge, it's his second it's four for Leeds United they're running riot here Michael Whitlow's free kick and they're almost scoring at will up in the air an awful long time Chapman nodded it on another little touch helped it on to from Gary Speed I think and Steve Hodge doesn't miss those does he couple of headers, fell very nicely for him, had all the time he wanted and Phil Kite, again no answer to that one, quickly to the left hand side, cross, up goes Hoyland that's one, Sheffield United on the score sheet, Jamie Hoyland simple header Leeds again attacking down the left hand side, that's a good cross there's Whitlow, oh, he nearly opened his account for the season it stays at 4-1 though Lukic long kick good flick on again the flag is up that will not count and Carl Schutt can't believe it and the Leeds United fans denied their celebrations there but uh, quite rightly the flag was up Shut again well that's a dreadful back pass now a chance here's Tony Agana he slipped it past John Lukic quite simply and in the absence of Brian Dean Agana's making up for it Gannon's free kick Leeds can't really afford to concede another one can they Bradshaw he's got it 4-3 United gave further evidence of their title credentials in their next game a fortnight later Notts County scored first and last 
but there was no stopping Leeds. Flick on again, it's back towards Chapman, and Chapman couldn't miss, and Leeds are on the score sheet. Batty, he's got a lot of room here, Notts County struggling at the back. Now Sterling, another of those teasing crosses perhaps, Hodge, oh that's a superbly worked goal, and Leeds are in front. Sterling's cross, and superb execution too. Early stage of the second half, Leeds looking for a third and getting it with Chris White. Well, Chris White must have got the faintest of touches there. But no matter, it's 3-1. Strachan, not too much space for him, so he leaves it for McAllister to try an ambitious shot. And it's gone in. It's 4-1. One of the goals of the season from Gary McAllister. A little help from the wind. Just look at that. October the 26th, 1991 was the first time Leeds actually grabbed top spot. Manchester United's defeat at Sheffield Wednesday, coupled with Leeds' unspectacular victory over Oldham at Ellen Road, sent the fans home happy. But it was to prove a brief stay at the top. They slipped to second after only managing a goalless draw at Wimbledon and John Fashion, who hit the crossbar at that. Leeds regained pole position with a solid but hard-earned victory over Queen's Park Rangers. Sterling's going to drive one. It's deflected and Stacey is incredibly beaten. Mel Sterling gets his third goal of the season. A wicked deflection. It didn't really look to deviate that much, but it totally bemused Jan Stacey. Strachan arms aloft. Well, has this one gone on the far post? There's Wallace, and Rob Wallace has scored his first goal in league football for Leeds United. He got one in the Zenith Data Systems Cup match about three weeks ago, but that's his first one in league football. This is where it matters, and Leeds make the point safe, 2-0. That was the start of an incredible run for Rod Wallace. After taking his time to settle in at the club, he set United on their way next to one of their best performances of the season, and the nation were warned. Which is long kick, well met by Sterling. Real chance here for Wallace. That's a good save from Les Seeley and Villa get it clear. The Leeds might be kicking themselves at the end of this match, and Rob Wallace in particular if they don't manage to win, because that was a great chance. And Batty getting involved again. A long range shot. Didn't quite catch Les Seeley out. Looked like it might be for a moment. And Mr. Angry, they call him. Not too pleased the way that one got through either. Look at that chance for Rod Wallace again, though. Just a minute ago. Good point blank save from Les Seeley. Keeps it goalless. With those two saves. as well again the Chapman and Wallace dispossessing Villa and Batty sprays it wide to Wallace again left hand side another teasing cross chance for Chapman inches away from it Les Seeley is having a lot of work to do this afternoon isn't he good cross from Wallace and Chapman well another boot width away from it Greasy top, Strachan taking advantage. He's almost tying himself in knots there. Going to make some ends. Needs contempt with a throw in then. It's not Sterling will try another long one. He won't. Plays it short instead. He'll get a chance of a cross now. No one in a rush to block him off. Chapman's there, and so's Wallace. And Rod Wallace. Goals in successive games. Got the second against Queen's Park Rangers last weekend. And just touched that one over the line. And you've got to say, Leeds fully deserve it. It's been coming for a long time. Chapman's header seeded it very well again. Because it was certainly going in. And I think Seeley might just have helped it onto the post or even wide. But first of the loose ball was Rodney Wallace. 
Daly. Again, not managing to get it too far clear. Now, Hattie, will he try one? He's already got one this season. Not that far away. Look at Vestini again. Leeds dominating. At this stage, a second goal seems imminent. Hattie not quite getting it there, though. into the second half here White's click on Sterling bullet header and that's 2-0 and that does do some justice to the scoreline now I think these set pieces Leeds are getting better and better at them and you've got to mark Mel Sterling from corners or throw-ins down by the corner flag Chris White doing just enough so hard to defend against those click ons what a superb diving header from Mel Sterling just like Rod Wallace, that's goals in successive matches for him too. them here and Chapman's punished them. Gordon Strachan ripping Villa apart. A cheeky back heel from Gary McAllister. And Strachan nearly walks it into the net, poked it across the face of the goal and Lee Chapman scores most of his goals in a six-yard box. I think that one was within about six inches. An inquest in the Villa defence that I should think. Nick Chapman won't mind. Leeds go three up. Villa are being ripped apart. So he couldn't really do anything else there. Batty and Wallace again. Oh, can they get a fourth? Here's number four, Batty. Well cleared from Sean Teal. Behind, but Chapman frustrated it couldn't have come to him for his second goal. But he didn't do badly though. It's a bit better defending from Villa. Two up there again with Kevin Richardson. Leeds winning out again. Dorigo. We've all got the confidence to do everything this afternoon now. Chapman. Good save from Seeley again on the line. McGraw will get it away. Dorigo. Skipping round his man, running a few yards, good cross. The leads are finally stopped. Tony Daly, the man, getting it from Batty, lays it on into the area. Chance, here's Dwight York, it's there. Cyril Regis and Delian Atkinson pushing forward, and Dwight York following up. Fourth here, Dorigo skipping past three men there, but was it a cross? Was it a shot? Didn't really matter that much in the end. Still 3 1. His England skills there, though, riding a few tackles. John Villa happy to clear it anywhere. We can have his get off the park this afternoon, I think. Shots are raining in from all over. Chapman going for the loose ball. Arias Kavici getting it anywhere. Again, well, City won't be too happy with that save, but he's had so much to do this afternoon. And City may be tested again here. That's a great ball. Strachan's running on. Is this going to be the fourth? No, inches wide. the face of the goal then Strachan put through and perhaps he'll feel he should have done a little better all good situation though the defender closing on him with every stride he took and the seed has been in pretty good form despite the fact he's had three put past him this afternoon inches wide and the fans just want this to end 
Strachan won't though. Another good game for him this afternoon. Now Chapman ahead of him, we can see him there. He's got a man out wide, that's Sterling. Sterling, one touch, there's a cross. Here's Chapman, that's his second and Leeds fourth. And what a way to finish a glorious afternoon for Leeds United. Well, they've got the one goal back, but Leeds restore their three-goal margin with a goal that has quality written all over it. Chapman flying in, perfect stuff. Well, Sterling got the ball early, one touch, first time cross, and they don't come much better than that. Next up at Elland Road were Everton. In a frustrating match, nothing seemed to be going Leeds' way. Chris Fairclough had been sent off, but ten man United suddenly found inspiration again from that man, Wallace. Wallace also grabbed two in the Rumbelows match against Everton a few days later and still had his scoring boots on at Luton as Leeds strengthened their hold on top spot. And throws in Batty again this time, Chapman bouncing around, it's Wallace! He's done it again! Oh, joy for Rodney Wallace and for Leeds United. Well, how does he do it? That's the fifth successive game he's scored in. Got two at Everton in the run blows. And his fourth successive league match as well now. Again the set piece, this time the long throw in. Again the flick on. Chapman supplier this time. A little other help on as well, possibly from Chris White who put a bang on the head, but Wallace finishes it off. Goal scorer Wallace in there again. Laying it off for Mel Sterland. Early ball, his speed, right footed, he's done it again. Leeds get their second after a struggle in the first half. The points are safe for Leeds now, I think. Gary Speed got his first league goal for two months to make the game safe, and he needed to be on the mark again in the next game to preserve the unbeaten home record. for missing this corner couldn't keep hold of it Chris White's effort was blocked but it came out and three men on the line another draw nil-nil at Nottingham Forest dropped the team to second place again entering the Christmas period on Boxing Day another large crowd at Ellen Road expected a hatful of goals against struggling Southampton and indeed they saw six goals but not what they expected Chapman with a touch Hodge it's in Leeds take the lead. Southampton's defence not good enough. Chapman did just enough to get the touch on. And like the parting of the Red Sea, Hodge was let in. The Southampton defence nowhere. And just had to, well, poke it over the line, didn't he? Tim Flowers, not a chance. Here's Chrissy White. Encouraged to come forward by... The space donated to him, Chapman, a little bit of a tussle there. And Sterling's done well outside of the boot. Hodge again, it's 2-0. Leeds double their lead. Steve Hodge doubles his tally for the afternoon. Another well-worked goal for Leeds United there. Seventh goal of the season 
for Steve Hodge. And it's only the sixth time he started a game. Still in finding the only man there who wasn't marked. Here's Mickey Adams, former Leeds man, of course, asking for the 1 2. Instead, it's come for Dowie. Ian Dowie scored for Southampton. Well, it's, this is better. Carl well, Sterling, another goal that eased the nerves a bit, I think. Still to get another chance. Gittin's still on him. That gives Sterling all the more chance. And that is a third goal with Gary Speed rising to meet that one. In the end, the little slip down by the corner flag helped Leeds quite a lot. Certainly helped Mel Sterling deliver the cross there. And we'll just see Gary Speed with force taking it past Tim Flowers. Down he flicks on. Shearer. Oh, that's a great strike. It seemed like nothing was on there. Mickey Adams, and you can hear how anxious the crowd are. There's Shearer again. Tim Dowie, it's in, it's 3 all. The return match against Manchester United was the first of three scheduled meetings. A late penalty converted by Mel Sterling saved Leeds' honour in the league game, and in retrospect, what a vital penalty that was. Losing to Manchester in the two cup games was a blow, but with hindsight, perhaps a blessing. A serious injury to Lee Chapman in the FA Cup game was an unqualified disaster. The previous season's top scorer in Division 1, Chapman had just begun to hit form with two goals at West Ham and that incredible display against inform Sheffield Wednesday at Hillsborough immediately prior to the accident. Chapman's done it again. He stooped down and nodded it home with not a strong header but great direction and that's what counts. West Ham have gone eight without a win really in trouble at the foot of the table and the defence will be kicking themselves here because they left Chapman and Marks and you can't afford to do that he's punished them again Chapman up there again oh, he's got it to McAllister now a chance for Gary McAllister that's a good goal what a good finish from Gary McAllister and that's only his third goal of the season but look how he took it Chapman into his path. Chapman had done the hard work. And McAllister supplying a finish that Lee Chapman would be proud with. Wallace down the right. Chapman's asking for it. And Chapman's got his second. And the points are safe now. It's 3 1. Wallace went down the right hand side. Made the most of the error. And Lee Chapman pulled away from his marker. see there that Wallace was so quick onto it after the dispossession again the West Ham defence concentrating on the ball it's 3-1 well Leeds really know they've got a tough job on their hand on their hands here the positive start now here's Dorigo Wallace is calling for it on the far side Dorigo's going alone Chris Woods tipping it over the bar. I thought for a moment, Tony DiRigo was going to get a rare goal. McAllister with it. And Chapman has a simple task again. He's there where it mattered most. He'll congratulate Chris White there. And Chris Fairclough surely, because if we see the corner again, Big men were in there for the knockback, and there was Chris Fairclough, and there was Lee Chapman. Great start for Leeds, and great start for Chapman against one of his, well, pretty many former clubs. Bird's eye view there. Well, Sheffield Wednesday unbeaten at home since the first day of the season when they lost to Aston Villa, but Leeds with a great start. That's a lovely ball again down the right-hand side. 
Speed setting Hodge on his way, and Hodge, can he send it? He can't fight. Chapman was waiting again there. But if you watch again, Viv Anderson with those long, long legs, just long enough. Hodge again. Leeds swarming forward, and those uh, Leeds fans behind the goal really begging for Leeds to strike again. That's a testing one. Woods leaves it. Chapman again. And perhaps Chris Wood will say was proved right there. Another good cross. Lee Chapman not quite able to get enough power onto that one. But well directed nonetheless. Again, it's Tony Dorigo down this left-hand side for Leeds. And again, he's got support from Wallace. And Wallace turns his man. And Leeds really stretching Sheffield Wednesday there. And Carl Shutt. Saw the ball go just about a foot and a half away from both him and the post. A little bit either way, and Leeds would have scored again. Picking out Chapman every time, aren't they? And the Leeds crowd in full voice here. Cheering even more if they can score again. And they might do. Chris Woods relieved again to pounce on that one. Carl Schutz scored uh, well, just the one this season down at Chelsea. He hasn't had too many first team outings. Had a good chance there though. Still them bringing it away. gone on his own don't see this from Lee Chapman too often that would have been a super goal but Lee Chapman there must have sensed that he didn't have any support and even survived a little tap on the ankles took it on his own oh that's got to be a free kick hopefully right on the spot there Here's Dorigo. That's a great goal. And Tony Dorigo does get another one. His last goal was at Norwich. Also from a free kick situation. And that is a every bit as good a strike. Another free kick situation. The layoff, the shot. And you won't get more precise than that. Not even a deflection. And Chris Woods just couldn't keep it out. Ron Nielsen into the area. Well, what's the referee, is he going to give a penalty? He is, and the linesman will get a lot of remonstrating with for that. Well, one could get oneself into an awful lot of trouble. Watching this again and again, Gordon Watson falling over. I think we shall say. Lukic holds it, but Sheridan eventually gets the goal he wanted against his former side. And John Lukic did so well. A penny for your thoughts, Mr. Wilkinson. A measured ball again from Tony Dorigo. Again, Chapman's breaking away. Here he is. And there's the goal. Exquisite stuff from Leeds United. And I don't know about bringing the net down. They'll bring the house down with much more of this. Brilliant ball from Tony Dorigo. And the cross was every bit as good. You could see Chapman breaking away. That's how good he is in the air. Instinctively know where one another are. Staying top tonight, it's just going to be a matter of how many, I think. 
Gary Speed won't get it. Chapman will. Leeds get another one. And Lee Chapman is on the mark again. A marvellous, marvellous afternoon for the West Yorkshire side. Wednesday are being destroyed. Speed could have got it. Denied by the woodwork. Leeds reacting first again. Wallace, namely. And Chapman nodding it home. And I think Lee Chapman will be grabbing the match ball this evening. At Hillsborough as well. Leeds are running Sheffield Wednesday absolutely ragged. Like statues there. Well, exhibition stuff now from Leeds. Sterling to Wallace, Whitlow, oh Mike Whitlow's even in on the act, another goal for Leeds, a substitute, number 12 Mike Whitlow, his first goal of the season, and what were we saying about Sheffield Wednesday, undefeated in seven, championship challenges, It's Leeds United who are quite rightly receiving all the praise here. Good header as well from Mike Whitlow to say he doesn't score that many. And how many times does Chris Woods concede so many? Well, perhaps Leeds aren't finished yet. Chapman. Whitlow again. Wallace, Rodney Wallace, and this is absolutely incredible. Rod Wallace scores his first for six games. And you start running out of fingers to count on. You start running out of things to say in praise of Leeds United. All credit to Wallace. The defence opened for him again, really, but still had to finish it and did well both substitutes in there Davison may be eager to get to it but Wallace beat him to it and that just about sums it all up the hangover of the FA Cup reverse seemed to linger as Leeds took the field against Crystal Palace Jeff Thomas superbly struck the Eagles into a surprise lead but Leeds responded well the equaliser came from Chris Fairclough, his first of the season, and Leeds could have gone on to win the game, but it finished level. On the 1st of February, Leeds were still top, and stayed there by beating Notts County at Ellen Road. In fact, their first home win since beating Everton back in November. Sterling's there, oh, and a simple goal. Well, the county defence was non-existent, and Mel Sterling does the little jig. And we'll see again that Notts County gifted Mel Sterling that goal. Strachan's corner, Sterling didn't even have to move. Straight to him, well-directed header on the left though from Mel Sterling and it crept in at the corner, 1-0. Thomas, oh, Batty's dispossessed him. Now chances for Leeds here. Strachan comes, it's three against one. Batty's going alone. He shoots and he scored a sensational goal. Well, David Batty doesn't get too many, does he? But that must surely be his best. And the best for quite a while at Elland Road, too. He took it from inside his own half, single-mindedly after dispossessing Thomas, into the area, quick look at goal, eye on the ball, Leeds make it two. Can Strachan extend United's lead, then? In they come, the header back across the place, a goal, it's got to be over, yes, it is! Turner couldn't clear it and it popped up nicely for Rod Wallace. Well, certainly not as eloquent as the goal from David Batty. But they all count and that's number three. Notts County's defence has been no match for United's attack so far this afternoon. The ball getting stuck there but Wallace making no mistake. But who can ever forget that goal by David Batty? Not, it seems, Howard Wilkinson. It, 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 it might be a contender for goal of the season. Because I always think you have to take achievement in context. 
he doesn't score a lot of goals. Uh, it was a, it was a premeditated goal. He picked it up a long way out. He had to run a long way with the ball, and then when he got there, his finishing was 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 equal to any striker in that position. You'll see. It was a very 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 good finish. It was after the game against County that Wilkinson revealed he'd signed the French international Eric Cantona on loan for the rest of the season, a move that was to become permanent. The Frenchman's debut, though, was eminently forgettable. He came on for Steve Hodge at half-time in a poor display against Oldham. Leeds didn't create one real chance, and a goal in each half for the Latics sent Leeds spinning to their second league defeat and knocked them off the top spot too. United could only get a point against Everton at Goodison Park in their next match, which finished one all. This goal from Carl Shutt, or was it an own goal from Martin Keogh, put Leeds in front, but Matt Jackson's header restored the balance. Lee Chapman was surprisingly back to fire the front line on the last day of February, and he linked up with the man who was now becoming a cult hero when Cantona replaced the injured Tony Dorigo. It was an instant success. Cantona's got it for Leeds. McAllister went down. Luton might have thought they were conceding a penalty. You'll see it here. But Cantona played on. That's his first. It's come at last. Chapman beaten to it, headed away by Steve Sutton. Chapman will get another chance, maybe. He will now, and he'll score. What a goal from Lee Chapman. And that is for all those weeks out injured. Cast on his arm, maybe. Doesn't stop him finishing with goals like this from his right foot. His 15th of the season. Nothing went right for Leeds in their next match against Aston Villa. At one stage, injuries to Fairclough and Sterling reduced Leeds to nine men on the field. But they battled on, held on for a goalless draw, and will feel they ought to have won. Gordon Strachan, though, failed from the penalty spot for the first and only time this season. Leeds' next five games were all against London opposition. First to White Hart Lane for a tricky game against Spurs. Wallace with a real chance. He's got it. Rod Wallace on his return to that number eight shirt for Leeds United has broken the deadlock. Touch there from Sedgley. Wallace took it down well though. And the touch from Sedgley helped if anything. Good finish right in the corner. Strachan takes the corner. Newsom! Would you believe it? He's just come on as a substitute. He's only appeared once before as a substitute this season. And that's his first goal for Leeds United. Strachan again. His Contenar, good touch. McAllister takes it in his stride. Gary McAllister, who's it got the legs? It has. It's 3 1 to Leeds United. Gary McAllister seals it. That win put Leeds back at the top of Division 1. And four days later, they had a chance to open up a real gap between themselves and Manchester United. But despite taking the lead against Queen's Park Rangers, they lost by four goals to one. Curling in a good cross and not it down beautifully by Gary Speed. Leeds United go into the lead. Comes the corner. Forced in there. Wilkins again. Allen's going in there. Lukic has lost for the moment. My goodness, that was uh, nearly another break for him. And now Sinton with a shot. Well, Clive Wilson scored from the spot on Saturday. He scores from the spot again. A home game against Wimbledon gave Leeds the chance to make amends. And they did just that, inflicting the first defeat on the Dons since Joe Kinnear took charge. Matty starting this move, really. McAllister taking it on. And it was at the keeper, but didn't look too confident. McAllister, sight set on goal all the way. Chapman up there again. Now here's Rod Wallace. Batty on the overlap there. 
and Chapman side put it in home didn't really look like there was anything on there but Chapman found something that's another goal and Leeds needed that to settle the nerves down Batty getting in well it looked an innocuous sort of cross Chapman winning it again in the air. Oh, that's fallen nicely for Rod Wallace. Wallace again. Chapman again. It's 2 0. Leeds perhaps a little fortunate there. They got the rub of the green when Rod Wallace went round Barton. Chapman was waiting in the middle. All Wallace had to do was find him. Easier said than done. But he had an awful lot of space. Another one of those long John Lukic kicks setting up leads here. Looking for a third. Strachan plays the 1 2. Gets the return. Chapman leaves it. This time it's Wallace. Will he score? He will. He set up the last one. He's got this one himself. And barring another match like the Sheffield United one here, at the end of last year, the points look safe. They were 4 0 up that day and just won 4 3 in the end. They've got another 3 0 lead here. And Wimbledon, well, they've come here in such good form. But they've met a lead side determined to stay top of the league. And Rod Wallace should just about ensure they do that. Oh, acres of space here. Miller should get one back. Lukic saves first attempt, but he's not there for the second attempt. Lukic did well. well. This is up in the air. Can Leeds restore this three goal lead? And McAllister forced wide. Oh, he's done well there, hasn't he? Crowd like that. Into the side netting from Rodney Wallace, despite what some people thought there. And Lee Chapman. Wouldn't normally see him like that. Uh, when Leeds appear to have it comfortably won, but. Looking for that hat trick. Booth back into the Leeds half. It's looking a little edgy there for a time. Oh, Contenar. He's on his own. Can he get another goal? He can. It's four for Leeds. And Eric Contenar. Probably the first time he's worn that shirt in his life, the number three. But he won't be complaining this evening. His second goal for Leeds United. Already a crowd favourite. Cult hero at Ellen Road. He gets the fourth. Another awful mistake in the Wimbledon defence. And the charity beginning here at Ellen Road. doing what many people think he does best battling away and setting up something else for Leeds here Shut, did well to keep that in Chapman off well how on earth did that one go in it doesn't matter it did it's another hat-trick for Lee Chapman it's five for Leeds United that was Leeds biggest home win of the season and kept them top however nerves were beginning to jangle at both Ellen Road and Old Trafford the initiative swung undeniably to Manchester as Wilkinson's troops could take just two points from their next three games. It was Sunday the 22nd of March when Leeds visited Highbury. The defending champions were playing just about their best soccer of the season and Wilkinson pronounced himself satisfied at the outcome. Chapman, it's there! That could be a priceless goal here at Highbury Stadium. Wallace with a cross and Lee Chapman enlivens an encounter it wasn't the most thrilling but Leeds are in front now can they hold on Arsenal kicking themselves they've had a few chances themselves they've got a slight deflection there but it all helped 
Chapman finish it off. Mason and Dixon there. Cross should be cleared here. Is that gone behind? No. Nope. Still bouncing around. Adams. Extraordinary effort there. Now Merson. He's going alone. Merson levels matters. The East manager was surely less pleased at a nil-nil draw the following weekend against West Ham. It left Manchester United breathing down Leeds' neck with a stack of games in hand. April looked like being the critical month for the destiny of the title, and so it proved. On Saturday the 4th of April, however, many Leeds players were ready to admit that the championship was slipping from their grasp after a crushing blow at Main Road. It ended 4-0, and City's joy was tempered only by the thought that they'd gift-wrapped the prize for their cross-City rivals. Or had they? City grabbed a draw in the Manchester derby soon afterwards, and when Leeds bounced back to crush Chelsea at Ellen Road, the glimmer of that championship flame had been rekindled. Strachan's still going. Now Wallace, he squeezed it in! Rodney Wallace at the near post for Leeds United. Should have helped to settle them down a little. Chelsea's defence not tight enough on him really, and Besson beaten at the near post. McAllister, well placed here down the left. Besson's come out to meet him. Chapman, can he walk it in? He can! Well, Eric Cantona incredibly laying it off to him there when it seemed like he'd go for goal himself. Chapman as surprised as I was, I think. Well, you can't accuse him of being selfish, can you? And that's nice for Lee Chapman. He reaches the 20 mark again. Well, the points are safe now. Eric Contenar trying to add a bit of French flair at the end, and that is exactly what he's done with a goal of class. It's 3-0, and they'll still be talking about that goal at the end of the season. The best I've seen here at Elland Road, I think, this season. An honorary member of the Leeds United fan club after that, even if he wasn't already. Look at this. One touch, still in the air, there's another. Takes it down, controls it, and half follows it. Easter proved a vital time. Manchester United took just one point from three games over the holiday period, while Leeds held their nerve to gain four points from two matches. First, a goalless draw at Anfield. Then, on Easter Monday, Leeds took the field at five o'clock. They'd just seen Alex Ferguson's side losing 2-1 at home to Nottingham Forest, and in a tense rather than exciting game, Leeds edged out Coventry City, who were battling for their own Premier League lives. Fair Club scores a priceless opener. Chances for Leeds again here. It might fall for Contenar. Off the line. The referee's whistle. I think he's given a penalty. Well, that looked harsh. McAllister's first ever penalty for Leeds. It's there. It's 2-0. Leeds returned to the top with that win but they still weren't favourites for the crown. Manchester United had a game in hand still, but astonishingly failed once more, 1-0, at bottom club West Ham. For the first time, Leeds knew their destiny lay in their own hands, and the season entered its last lap. Both sides had two games remaining, and most believed it wouldn't end until the final day. Yet another.
another informed side awaited them at Bramall Lane. It was another Yorkshire derby, and yet another incredible game full of incident in an incredible season. Rodrigo's effort harmlessly into the side netting. Now Gannon's corner for Sheffield United. Leeds can't get it clear. Corp! He scored! Rigo tries one. Oh! Almost crept in, didn't it? Well, Reed's been doing so well in goal lately. Leeds will get the free kick there. Strachan looking to take it quickly. And does do so. There's Wallace. Speed now against Gale. And Wallace, it's in. Well, would you believe it? That's an absolutely astonishing goal. Leeds will be behind in injury time here in the first half. And somehow, don't ask me how, they're level. Let's look at it again. Wallace, he couldn't force it home. It seemed that speed must. Out came Gale. And it bounced in off Rod Wallace. Crucial. What a difference that'll make to the Oranges at half time. Wallace again. And he has got shut in support. Headed away as far as Batty. Now speed against the woodwork. What a start to this second half. Leeds continuing after that goal at the end of the first period. Patty brought down. Well, you get the feeling the next goal is going to be vital. There's McAllister's free kick. Newsom! Oh, it's 2-1! Tom Newsom, who used to play across the city at Hillsborough. He doesn't look like he can believe it. McAllister's free kick. It floated over everybody's head. A part, that is, from John Newsom. 2-1. And just his second goal of the season. Still, Sheffield United are causing Leeds problems. Here's another one of those Gannon corners again. It's back in off Chapman. Lee Chapman got the final touch there. And Sheffield United are level. Well, Leeds just clear it anywhere. Happy with the point at this stage, I think. It's 2 all, but for the even snatch a winner. Contenar's racing on. Gale in there. He's needed up. He's headed it over. It's gone in. It's 3-2. The most remarkable goal, and it could just decide the championship. Brian Gale's own goal. Contenar and Wallace were putting the pressure on. But Brian Gale may as well have been wearing a yellow shirt there. 3 2. Just what's going to happen next? There comes Big Eric chasing in, but the knee up. Well, what was he trying to do? And Wallace and Cantona can't believe it. And look at their watches again. The last seconds are always the longest when you're winning. It's all over! Leeds were four points clear, and the fans who'd screamed out, are you watching Manchester, each time that Leeds took the lead at Sheffield, now settled back to watch themselves and see if Manchester United could stay in the race. And the rest, as they say, is history. Well, those events of last Sunday seem an awful long time ago now. It's been celebrations non-stop this week for Leeds United, ever since the final whistle at Anfield when Liverpool defeated Manchester United and Leeds knew they were going to collect the league championship 
this afternoon. There it is, take a long look at it. Because next season it's the Premier League. But this season it's the Championship of the Football League Division 1 for Leeds United and for Gordon Strachan, the team skipper. A packed house here at Ellen Road, as you'd expect on a glorious occasion. And now it'll make its way down the line from Lee Chapman with 20 goals this season to John Lukic. I think he was the only ever present this season. Didn't that man, John Newsom, score a couple of important goals near the end? David Batty and Gary Speed, well, Batty's a local lad through and through. Gary Speed's been here most of the time. New signing, Tony DiRigo this season. Then the central defenders, Chris Fairclough, Chris White, Gary McAllister. Little kiss on the trophy. And the same as well from Stevie Hodge. Troubled by injuries, but a championship winning medal nonetheless for him and for Rod Wallace and for Carl Schutt. Mel Sterling, a few antics from Mel here. He promised us this. Delightful to see. And you don't need to speak English when the pictures say it all. Eric Contenar. Dylan Kerr there. All the squad members enjoying this afternoon as well they might. Leeds United champions of the first division. And they've waited an awful long time for this, haven't they? And after all the singing, the dancing, the celebrations, they've still got to play a match after this. Everyone here today will remember these scenes. bit like after the Lord Mayor's Parade so far. Yeah, midway through the first half now. Wallace. He took it on the halfway line. He's still going. He's gone past another. Rod Wallace. And it's gone in as well. That is a remarkable goal from Rod Wallace. It's livened things up here without a doubt. It's 1-0 to Leeds United. And Rod Wallace opens the scoring on what a great way to open the scoring on the final day of the final league campaign as we know it Rod Wallace took it up there on the halfway line literally swept it past a man beat another still going looked like it might have gone too wide not a bit of it 1-0 for Rod Wallace nice end of the season he's 14th a little bit different to that when he scored last week. For the record, Manchester United won their last game, but Leeds finished a commanding four points clear of their rivals. It was a season in which Leeds surpassed most expectations, perhaps even their own and those of their fans. But in the end, they were seen to deserve all they achieved. And Leeds, both the team and the city that supports it, can justly be proud. Years for me, absolutely fantastic. Not just for myself, but everybody involved. And I thought when I first joined the club, it'd take about six, seven years to get to first division championship status because of the hard work with the manager and the players and the backroom staff. It's come a lot quicker than I expected. Did you think you'd still be here at the club to see a Leeds United success? No, not my wildest dreams. Uh, when I first came to the club, my ambition was to get them into the first division and hopefully be a uh, a good standard in the first division and I thought I'd obviously have to maybe retire or move on and at least somebody else to take over to win the championship but uh, I've been fortunate enough to, to get a lot of good players beside me in the last couple of years and it's been easier to win the title. Well, I think there's only John Lucas who's won a championship medal in England before and Gordon stuck in one in Scotland but uh, it's new ground for us all, and um, some of the, the young ends of the scale, people like myself towards, towards the other end, so it's a fantastic achievement by the way. Did you really think it'd pass you by, you wouldn't have this medal in your collection when you retired? Well, once you reach the 30s, you, you obviously uh, realise that your, your, your chances of winning a championship medal are numbered, the chances are numbered, but uh, I never gave up hope when I joined these, I knew they were a big club, an ambitious club, and the, the ultimate aim was to win the league championship, and they've done it in a very quick time. You just cannot put into words in a short space of time the importance 
of a league championship. Um, obviously, after a league championship, you, need, you then need to go and underline and confirm the credentials you've, you've, you, you've achieved by, by being further successful. Whether that's winning it again or whether that's playing as well again, but, but, but you've got to stay there. But the first job's getting there, that's the difficult bit. And, uh, and we've done that, now we must, we must try and make sure that, 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 that we keep that standard. Well, this season's squad have done magnificent. Make no mistake about that, the people of Leeds uh, should ignore all, all, all the things that, that have been said in a negative fashion about Leeds United. Uh, because what I'm telling, telling the people of Leeds is this, this lot, compared with some squads, had no right to do what they've done. But they've done it because they were prepared to work harder than anybody else, stick at it longer than anybody else, take the pressure better than anybody else, and, and, and be more positive than most of the other teams who were involved this season. I think it's very exciting. Uh, I, I think that um, it's not the end, it's the beginning. Uh, you know, we've now achieved what we set out to do, and that is to become back it's a major force in the first division. Um, whether we expect it to become the champions this year or not, I don't know, because we never discussed it. But what we did want to do was to make sure that Leeds United was back at the top level, back in Europe, and back fighting for honours. And, and that's what we've done. All I can say now is that um, the, the, the champions, uh, we go into the European, compete for the European Cup next year. Uh, historically, this club has seen every trophy come here except one. And the one that's missing is the big one. And uh, that's what we're going in for next year. And uh, I'm sure that Howard Wilkinson will be going in with the maximum degree of seriousness and calmness. And hopefully that we can make a determined effort to have a good crack at uh, do it, bringing the one trophy to Leeds that the fans have never seen here. And that is the European Cup.